Okay. Dark sea, dark woods, dark skies, grey skies, grey water, and dark skies. Interesting. <laughs> grey skies, dark waters, that is what the game is called. I hear a lag. The woods are dark. I put my fingers on the back. I like these trees. They're near the sea. I like the way they set me free. I ask them why. I sometimes cry when the silver moon is in the sky. But they don't say. They never say. And so I always go away. Hmm. That made me sad reading that. <laughs> the catching poem. Okay. Um, uh, my book. I remember this book. It was Dad's, I think, when he was little. And this is the poem about two sisters who find a fairy market, and Laura eats the goblin men's fruit and almost dies. I can't believe they ever thought this was for kids. <laughs> oh. Oh, we got that too. Oh, cried Lizzie. Laura, Laura, you should not peep, peep a goblin man. Lizzie covered up her eyes, covered close, lest they should look. Laura reared her glossy head and whispered like the restless brook. Look, Lizzie, look, Lizzie. Down the glen tramp little men. One holds a basket, one bears a plate. One locks a golden dish of many pounds weight. No, said Lizzie, no, 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 their offers should not charm us, their evil gifts would harm us. She thrust a dimple finger in its ears, shut eyes, and ran. Curious Laura chose to linger, wondering at each merchant man. One had a cat's face, one whisked at a, t one whisked a tail, one tramped at a rat's pace, one crawled like a snail. She heard a voice like voice of doves cooing all together. They sounded kind and full of loves in the pleasant weather. Laura stretched her gleaming neck like a rush embedded swan, like a lily from the bag, like a moonlit poplar branch, like a vessel at the launch when its last restraint, restraint is gone. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, that didn't seem like much like a children's story. That ink looks old. I wonder if Dad was the one who underlined that last part. <sighs> Merle never makes her bed. I guess she doesn't have time for it. She's too busy dreaming up crazy ideas or running through the woods to who even knows where. Number four, her lucky number. Hey, it's my old copy of Matilda. I used to have nightmares about Miss Trunchbull. What's this? If we could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks like she has been recording something. Is anything? So we can't go into any of the drawers, no. Okay, we can't go down here, we can go to the way. Yep, okay. There she books. Hey. What? Hmm. Oh, that's us. Hard at work in the pursuit of scientific discovery, huh? I'm being a forensic scientist. That means I solve crimes. <laughs> it's really cool. Tell me what kind of case you're solving. You know how much I love strawberry yogurt, right? And how I've told everybody not to eat it? Well, this morning I went to get some out of the fridge, but there was only one left. And yesterday morning, there were three. I thought that if I sprinkled fingerprint powder over the last yogurt and figured out which prints weren't mine, then I'd know who ate the rest. Cool. 
Couldn't you have just asked who ate it? Well, I, I guess. But this is so much more fun! I get to be a scientist! So who did it? I'm not sure yet. See, I have to get fingerprint samples from everybody else. I got Dad and Vi to give me samples this morning, and, and they didn't match. So it was either Merle or it was you. Okay, so here I have to make a choice. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes. It was me. So it was you! I had a feeling. Merle doesn't even like yogurt. But why did you eat it? We ran out of blackberry jelly a few days ago, so I couldn't make toast and just ate yogurt instead. Sorry, bud. I should have asked. It's okay. I still get to solve a mystery. I wonder what other ways I can use these fingerprints. <laughs> You'll be a wonderful scientist someday. I want to be. I see Dad going to work every day in his lab. I want to do that. Not with birds, but with something. Forensics is neat, but so is geology and chemistry. It's all so interesting. Hey, who says you can't do all of it for now? You have a long time before you have to make up your mind. You wouldn't happen to know anything about a diary of Dad's floating around here, would you? Diary? <laughs> what? No. Are you sure about that? Um, I... No. So you're not sure? N no. So that means you do know something. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Look under my bed. There are some pages there. You can read them, but give them back when you're done. Where did you find them? They were in Dad's briefcase. And they looked interesting, so I took them. Are you going to tell him? No. But it isn't right to take people's things. Hey! You're the one who's asking for them. And I bet Dad never intended for you to read them, so isn't that kind of like you're taking his stuff too? Point taken. Thanks for telling me, Gus. I appreciate it. No problem. Amateur detectives always help each other out, right? <laughs> I'll talk to you in a little bit. Keep up the good detective work, all right, Dr. Garrett? <laughs> you bet I will. A few months ago, I did a load of laundry for Gus and decided to fold it and put it away just to be nice. I found a glossy photo at the bottom of his shirt drawer, but it wasn't Megan Fox or Selena Gomez or a Playboy centerfold. It was Jillian Anderson from the X-Files carrying a gun and looking badass. <laughs> Acne all clear for teens. But Gus only has, like, two pimples. Oh well. Anything's enough to make that kid feel self-conscious. <laughs> Look! It's a deck from Mages, the convention. I used to be obsessed with playing this back in middle school. A few nights ago, Gus asked me if I wanted to look at constellations with him. He showed me Cassiopeia, Orion's Belt, Lynx. Apparently, Lynx isn't even named for the animal. 
The guy who made up the constellation said that anyone who wanted to see it should have eyes like a lynx. I guess Gus does. <laughs> Hey, don't look at that! Petition <laughs> form. Much ado about nothing. Okay. You want to be a an actor? No. You play an instrument. Okay. Music. <laughs> um, looks like a theater. Play or something. Hmm, do you have any particular physical skills? I'm good at doing all kinds of funny voices, even though my sisters say they all sound, sound like Jia Jia Binks. Oh wow, there's some mu uh, movie references in, this, uh, in the series. I can make all my noises, which Darkberry should be able to do. I can make lots of bird calling noises. Also, I know how to square dance. Hmm. Okay. We have to ask him about that. Okay, fair enough. Just take a look on. I like my potatoes mashed. Gus likes his serving as galvanic cells for a clock. <laughs> well, he is a little scientist, so... Books! The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Okay, I'm stuttering. Agatha Christie. The Hound of the Baskervilles by Arthur Conan Doyle. I think he's called Arthur, right? The Mystery of Edwin Drood, Charles Dickens, Edgar Allan Poe, The Complete Stories, and A. Austin Freeman, The Adventures of Dr. Thorndike. Hey, not the worst books at all. Oops, here we go. Look at that book. Grandma made that for Gus's 10th birthday. She'd never say it, but Gus is her favorite. None of the rest of us ever got quilts. <laughs> there it is. Hey. October 28th. Either I've gone crazy or I've discovered something incredible. I don't even know if I can describe it accurately, but I'll try. I know I'll, all, I'll want to remember this. Last night, I went out to Willow Creek Park to take some water samples. All of us on the contaminated water team are taking samples, hundreds of them, in order to collect a wide range from various points around the state. It was late. Around 11, and I wasn't supposed to be there. The park officially, officially closes at 9. I was in a working mood, though, and it's an easy enough matter to climb over the fence, which is only waist high. The moon was almost full, so I had no problem seeing. I was taking my first samples when I noticed the swans, and here is where I struggled to reconcile with what I saw with the rules of re reality. A flock of swans flew in and landed in the shallow waters near the shore. The flap of their wings against their body made the whistling noise so characteristic of the thunderous swan. I looked up and saw them coming closer and closer to land. That was the first odd thing, that they would all get so close to the shore. Then, as they reached the sand, their bodies began to shift, to mold into something else. They became, I do not know how else to say it, Human. The feathers slithered in a heap to their feet, and these creatures stooped to pick them up and carry them in their hands. They had not seen me. I was hidden behind a rock, and so I continued to watch. There were five of them, two men and three women. They were naked. In the moonlight, their skin was a pearly white, and their hair was dark and long. They were all so slender. Their bones jutted out, and their necks were long. They spoke to each other, but I was too far away to hear the words. After a few moments, they put their feathers down in a thicket of trees and walked into the forest, each going a separate way. <clears throat> I waited an hour for them to come back, but they didn't, so I left. I would have liked to investigate the feathers, but I didn't want them to know I'd been, I'd been nearby. Now it feels like I missed them. 
opportunity. Uh, this is what I've seen. Reading over what I've written, I doubt myself again and again. There must have been some kind of explanation, some piece of the puzzle I was missing. But this is what I've seen. I can't get the image of these creatures out of my mind. October 29th. I returned to the park last night and waited until 2 a.m., but I saw nothing. Perhaps they don't come out every night, or perhaps I thought I saw them, but... My medication has been the same for years now though, so the idea of it suddenly causing this kind of abnormality is alarming. alarming. If I had changed brands or started taking a different dosage or forgotten to take my pills for several days in a row, but none of those ifs are true and so can't be judged to have impacted the situation. I could hardly concentrate as I drove to the Envio Corp offices to perform the nitrogen load tests. When it began to rain, I forgot to turn on the wipers until the windshield was swimming with little torrents of water. I'll go out again tonight, and if I don't see them, then I'll assume it was all foolishness. Okay, that sounds interesting. Huh. So we have swans transforming into people. Hmm. Let's talk to you again. Hmm. So, you want to be an actor, huh? Hey, what's wrong with wanting to be in a play? Absolutely nothing. I think it's wonderful that you want to audition. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad. Much Ado About Nothing is such a fun play. I read the whole thing when the drama teacher said it was going to be this year's play. And it's so funny. <laughs> but sad, too, at times. Beatrice is my favorite. I want to be like her when I grow up. Smart and funny, and she gets the man in the end. Even though he's kind of an idiot. I like Beatrice because she doesn't jump to stupid conclusions. Unlike Claudio. <laughs> so why do you want to be Dogberry? He's not the main character. You could, you could try out for Benedict or Claudio. Because he saves the day in the end. He figures out the evil plot even if he's not very good at it, most of the time. And I get to pretend to be old and gray. <clears throat> I am a wise fellow, and which is more, an officer, and which is more, a householder, and which is more, as pretty a piece of flesh as any in Messina, <laughs> and one that knows the law. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. I really believed you were an old man just then. Gray hair and all. If you did, then maybe the drama teacher will too. All right. Well, good luck on the audition, okay? Thanks. What else is up? Are you trying to talk to me about mom? How did you know? Logic. I already saw the article in the paper this morning. Dad's been even more distant than usual, and your voice is all funny, like you're not sure about something. And those three things make me think that you want to ask me about Mom. <sighs> you're right. Sometimes you amaze me, Gus. Thanks. What did you want to ask, specifically? How do you feel about her being gone for a year? I'm fine. I was really sad earlier this year. Now I'm better. But I don't think we'll ever see her again. Fact. Her car disappeared and was found abandoned somewhere else. Fact. She was sad sometimes. Fact. She left for days at a time and would come back crying. Fact. After Dad, there haven't been any suspects. What I think, I think she killed herself. You may have a point, but you were thinking about that? You think I don't realize that people do that when they're not happy? I'm little. 
and I'm quiet, and sometimes people forget about me. But you know I'm not dumb. No, of course you're not dumb. I just don't want you to face stuff you're not ready for. I don't want to face it either, but I still think about it. I do too, sometimes. You're the most like her, you know, out of all of us. She loved us. She was always thinking about whether we were happy and safe no matter what. Yeah, I remember. You know the painting of hers downstairs? The one she did herself? I've stared at it for hours so that it's in my brain. So that I'll never forget what she looked like. You don't have to hold on to her that way. Just keep your memories of her. Those matter more anyway. But those are starting to fade away, too. Like, how her voice was a little raspy in the mornings. And the way she'd hum songs I never recognized when she was washing dishes. I can't always remember them perfectly. I know what you mean. I feel that way, too. All the time. So are you ready to go back to school? I guess I am. We're going to start learning about ecology and local food chains and science. And we're reading To Kill a Mockingbird for English over break. I finished it yesterday. It's awesome. I hear a but. I just... Well, there aren't a lot of people I talk to at school. It's a little lonely, honestly. I know that's hard, but who needs friends when you have family, right? Kind of like how Scout and Jem have each other in To Kill a Mockingbird. But then, they also have Dill. I don't have any friends like that. Remember that crystal-growing kit I got for my birthday? All the pictures on the box are of two people making the crystal solution, and smiling and laughing. So, I wanted someone else to do it with. Why don't you go out and make some friends? Treat it like a science fair project. Hypothesis. If I start enough conversations about Redwall books, I'll find at least one other person at school who likes them. Then you make friends. I know that's what you do, but for me, it isn't that easy. Everything falls apart when I try to talk to other people. I know it seems that way. But trust me, it'll get easier the more you try. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay, let's see what we actually have to do. We need to find the rest of the journal. We need to, well, we got the WD-40. We need to unstick the gate. We have to figure something out with that box. And we have to find that phone. Okay, well, let's uh, do that. Maybe I should actually save the game. Just kind of save it. <laughs> Just in case. Okay. Go out here. Mom never stopped us from reading any of her books. Which was why I first discovered what sex was from reading Harun al-Rashid and the Three Slave Girls in 1001 Arabian Nights. <laughs> the Mabin... What does it say? The Mabinokion. The once and future king. The Iliad. Wow. Even has the Iliad by Homer. Interesting. Uh, the more the art, the more down to. Hmm. And the mists of Avalon. That sounds interesting. My mythology. 
Okay. Uma, the Odyssey. Uh, okay. That's interesting. Interesting choice of literature in here. Raising your spirit. Child, is that what it says? Huh. Hmm, I feel like I'm seeing a uh, pattern. Oh. Oh, hey. It's our Celtic horoscopes. Mom had us all get these done a few years ago. She was very into them for a while. I think horoscopes... ...can be right a lot of the time. Okay. Interesting. I actually read all of them. Evelina Jane Garrett. Uh huh. Okay, so it's a swan, snake, beggar deer, and a seahorse. Ah, okay. The woman born during the time of the swan is above all observant. She notices and analyzes everything in her environment. She can be. She can be. A homebody, and is often uh, quite familiar, family oriented. Is that what it says? Although she appears to be mm, calm and collected on the surface, her calm demeanor. Masks and intensity of spirit unrivaled by any other sign. Okay, interesting. Violet Laura Garrett. <clears throat> In many cultures, the snake represents balance and world order. She moves in perfect rhythm with nature, seeking cool. Uh, cool what? Uh, not sure. And then, um, hello, and then Sunny rocks when it pleases her. The snake makes may seem stand offish and downright rude, but that may be due to her natural con connection to the world of shadow and mysticism. A snake is often highly creative and quite wise. Okay, we have Mel Teresa Garrett. In a in Celtic law, the deer stands for perception, as she is intuitive and empathetic. Often outgoing, the deer is quick to make friends and radiates a bright positive energy. Like a deer treading a new path in the forest, she is a trailblazer, as she does not fear change. Hmm. Well. That sounds a lot like Mel, based on her room anyway, and that is Evelina, I guess that's Lena, our character. That also makes sense. Then we have Argus, Argus Rabbit Garrett. <clears throat> the seahorse is the cleverest of all the signs. His eye takes in, in all that he sees, and his knife-like mind allows him to transform his observations into understanding. It can be difficult for him to settle down, and he may um, drift through the sea, but his strength, when it is employed, is not to be trifled with. Okay. Well, sounds like there's some truth to some of this, at least. Oh, that's Violet's footprints. Two of the kids when they were young. I wonder if I missed something in some of the others, because I didn't actually realize that you could kind of click something like this. I have to go back and check that. These freaked me out when I was little. The women are so sad, but in such similar ways. All that dark wavy hair and their big shocked eyes and the way they're looking so intently at something. I can't look in the end of the bed as soon as I haven't seen Dad sleep here for months. This bed might as well be a part of an IKEA ad for all the use it gets. 